it's Naya. Welcome back to Naya with a Smile. Today I'm going to be doing my August wrap up. I'm so excited. I have some awesome books to talk about this month and oh my god, it was just a good reading month. This month was just a really balanced, just like fulfilled, perfectly rounded reading month. I got, I got a little bit of every genre in there this month so I'm really happy about that. The first book I'm going to talk about here was absolutely amazing. I cried when I finished this book. It was like, I like, like, out of every Cassandra Clare book that there is out, this is my number one favorite. It's It was Lady of Midnight, but now, now it's Lord of Shadows. I read Lord of Shadows by Cassandra Clare this month, and you guys, it was just... Oh my god, like I was scared it would suffer from middle book syndrome being that it's gonna be the second book in this little trilogy post prequel pre I don't even know what how many prequels we're on now with the mortal instruments in the shadow hunter world, but holy crap If you guys have been following my read with me vlogs, you know that this book has just been one of the best reading experiences of my life. This book is 700 pages long, you guys, and every single one of those 700 pages is filled with action and romance and oh my god, the romance. Okay. Sandra Clare just has this way of weaving in multiple plot lines. Like she has in every, like especially in Lady Midnight, but even more so in this book, there's like she's like the what was it there was like something on tumblr she's like the queen of like the sneaky biatches <laughs> She sneaks everything into this book and things that you didn't think were important in the last book end up like being a huge important thing in this book and it's like it was just so perfect. This is an 11 out of 10 book you guys. I could sit and talk about it for hours but honestly like I would say like read the Mortal Instruments series if you haven't already just so that you can get to this series. Here's the thing. Okay, I just said this before, but literally when you're reading this book, I promise you, you will be so confused as to who to shit because everyone is just compatible with everyone in this book and like, there's bisexual characters and gay characters and straight characters and trans characters and there's like, everything. There's like, 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 Cassandra Clare has find, like, she is diversifying the fantasy world and I love it so much. I lived for every part that didn't have Emma and Jules in it, which are the two main characters. I mean, I love them, but just the other characters are just stealing the show because they're just so interesting and, oh, I loved it. I loved it. Mwah. Next book I read this one. This is a book that I actually, like, picked up just because it was, I just felt like it was calling to me. I just wanted to read about vampires and I had recently hauled this book and it was only like 150 pages or something so I'm like okay I'm gonna give it a try. Night World by L.J. Smith and it wasn't until after I finished the book that I looked up the author and I realized she's the author of the Vampire Diary series and it just made so much sense because of this book you guys was so cheesy. It was so bad that it was good. Like I, I, I can't describe it any other way like this book was just it was awful in the sense that it was like every vampire stereotype in one book, every trope in one book. Like literally, this is like the living trope right here. It was predictable, it was unrealistic, it was like so insta-lovey, so incredibly. Like this book, if you look up the word insta-love in the dictionary, this book will be right there. It was so bad, but I couldn't I couldn't stop reading it though. It was like one of those, it's like watching a really cheesy horror movie that's just not even scary, but you just watch it anyways because it's so not scary that it's funny. Like that's this book here. It's like, if you want, like honestly, I feel like if you want a book to get you out of a reading slump, or if you want a book that you just want to like seriously laugh at or like hate read or just like a book to just remind you that there's good books out there, this isn't one of them. I don't even know how to rate this because I would like, a part of me wants to give it 10 out of 10 stars, but another part of me wants to give it like 2 out of 10 stars because it wasn't at all a good book. But when I was reading it, I wasn't expecting it to be a good book and, or I was at first, but then I was like, all right, this isn't gonna be. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how to rate this, guys. I'm just gonna let you know, it's really cheesy, it's really tropey, it's every stereotype and everything you don't want in a young, in a young adult book. 
is in this book. But if you want to read a book that will make you laugh, I highly recommend this one. Next book that I am still reading, oh my god, it's been a whole month and I'm still reading this book, but I actually literally only have 50 pages left, so that's why I'm counting this as read, because by the time you guys watch this, I will be done with it. And it is A Map for Red Girls by Jessica Taylor. Now, I've talked about this so much, I feel like, just because I've been like constantly reading it in all my Read With Me vlogs. But this book, all right, it is so much better than like, okay, it starts where you go in and you have these two characters, these two sisters and this guy that are stuck on this island. One sister is kind of like, um, you know, really soft spoken and she really looks up to her other sister who at the moment hates her. And the other sister is like this like, kind of stereotypical popular girl. She just doesn't care about anyone. She's really arrogant and ignorant. And she's just like, I did not like the other sister. Um, but anyways, in this book we have two storylines going on. We have the past and the present. So we see what happened in the past to these characters before they got stranded on this island, before they started acting the way they act towards each other. And it's really, honestly, like so, like such a good story. Like if you could see, I actually like sticky noted and highlighted some quotes in this because it was just, it was really good. And it's like one of those contemporary books that just is filled with so much, like right when it starts to almost get boring because I'm someone who's not a huge fan of contemporary books. It jumps to the present where like, you know, they're stranded on an island, they're trying to find water. Um, so it goes back and forth. You have that nice balance between like sweet contemporary and like we're on an island and we're trying not to die. <laughs> Overall, as for right now, I only like I said, I only have 50 pages left. I'm going to give this book a 7 out of 10. It is pretty high up there on my contemporary list. I would recommend it to a friend. And I think if you're a fan of survival stories and just contemporary, I think you'll really like this one. All right. Okay. So the next book that I read, I did not expect to actually read this month, but I like I'm the kind of person whenever I'm like stressed or something, I like to go back and read my favorite books. And so I leave to college in two days, <laughs> the day after tomorrow, and I just just wanted to read this book because I felt like it could really help me and it's just my like my happy place it's my happy place so I reread the Raven boys for the first time this is my second time reading it and you guys I never thought I would say this but the second time reading it was even better than the first time reading it. It was so amazing. This book is on my top three list of my favorite books of all times. This book changed my life and I was really afraid to reread it because I thought maybe I wouldn't feel the same way about it that I felt when I first read it like two years ago, three years ago. But I reread it again, you guys, and I, like literally the first page I was crying because it just brought back like all the feels of why I love this book so much. And when I was reading it, I realized there was so much in the book that I overlooked that I didn't like even remember happen happening in the like the first time I read it just because I read it so quickly and I actually took the time and I annotated like this whole book and it's just filled with scribbles and writings and highlights and sticky notes and just my thoughts and oh my god like these characters like my dream is to have like a friendship like this just to have this like group of friends that you just go adventuring with and just like oh I feel like friendships are so underrated in books I mean everyone's always like oh romance romance but like they forget how beautiful just like a really amazing tight friendship between characters is and it's just oh my, like this book is quotable this whole book is a quote and Maggie C. Potter has this really magical way of writing it's just magical and dark and true and you can tell like so much about Maggie C. Potter just by her writing and this is actually my signed copy if you could see it says to Naya Maggie this is like my most prized possession you guys like Maggie C. Potter signed this and I just it's for it will forever be my heart and I already want to reread it and I think I'm gonna start The Dream Thieves tonight um, because I'm just on a roll with rereading this series. But I, uh, this book is like a 15 out of 10, you guys. If you haven't read it, just read it. Just, just read it for me, okay? <laughs> the last book that I read that is actually a school-required reading, and I'm really cutting it close because, like I said, I get on campus on Monday, and today's Saturday, so I have to have this book read by Monday. Um, but I just finished it, and actually it ended up being so much better than I initially thought it was gonna be. Bill Billy Elegy by J.D. Vance. Now this book follows a main character and it's a retelling or memoir of his story growing up in Middle Tucky as he calls it which is like um, which is an area in the Midwest and he grew up very poor and um, he grew up in a neighborhood that just had so many problems in his family. You know in his family there was domestic violence, there was drug abuse, 
abuse. There was just, he had a crazy, really crazy childhood, but he was able to make it out and be successful in life. And so this is kind of his story about this sort of um, culture in the Midwest that's not really talked about a lot. And um, I just, at first I was like, oh, this is gonna be a story about like this middle-aged white guy who's complaining about life. Like that's what it felt like when I started reading it. But then I got into it more and I was like, wow, his story is actually pretty incredible. And it was really good. Like I totally misjudged this book. Um, and I just finished it today. And I have to say, I have to give this book like a nine out of 10. If you are interested in reading a memoir that can really resonate with you, if you're someone who came up from like a harsh background um, or if you just want to read about you know someone of a different culture than you then I would highly highly recommend Hillbilly Elegy and I'm really actually excited to get on campus and discuss it with my peers so yeah I'm really happy about this book because they're all the books I read this month you guys thank you guys so much for watching let me know what you guys read down below um, yeah and until next time keep reading and I'll talk to you guys later bye